Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. If this is your first time here, welcome to my beauty entertainment channel. Yup. Yeah. Okay, so if you'd like to follow me on social media, here is my Twitter and my Instagram for your enjoyment. Go have fun! And while you're here, you can check out some of my recent videos. I posted an Everything Wrong with Dance Moms a couple of days ago, and then before that I posted a video talking about the issues with The Sims 4, and I talked about the game and stuff packs, and then the day before that I ranked One Direction albums because I felt like it. So yeah, those are my recent videos. Wrap that up real quick. So today, Today we're going to be we're going to be doing another installment of my how blank cosmetics change the beauty industry. I've already done a couple of these. I've done one on Morphe, I've done one on ColourPop, and I've done one on Fenty Beauty. So those are the three that I've done so far. I was trying to remember cuz I'm like one of them was positive. Anyway, so I did, so I basically talk about how this specific brand had an impact on the beauty community and I also talk about how it's doing now and what it's kind of do. You'll figure it out. So today we're going to be doing MAC Cosmetics because um, in the past couple of months I've heard a lot of talk about MAC Cosmetics and not in the most positive light like it used to be so I wanted to touch on that and figure out what happened what was the shift so we're gonna do a quick history lesson because you know I can't just come on here just saying nonsense without any evidence so we're gonna be doing a history lesson so MAC Cosmetics started off as Makeup Artist Cosmetics that's what it's called and it was a it's a Canadian company it started off as a Canadian company I'm sorry my primer is leaking so there were two people, a makeup artist, a salon owner, and a makeup artist and a photographer, makeup artist and photographer. They came together and started MAC Cosmetics in 1985. So MAC Cosmetics was born and became to blossom in the early 80s, and they had um, Frank Toskin, one of the Franks. He was the creative director, and then the other Frank, Frank Angelo, was the director of marketing, and they worked in the kitchen of one of Angelo's hair stores because just starting out. Then once one of their brothers, um, one of their brothers-in-law who was a chemist came in, they were able to actually start and create the very first lipstick, which was inspired by a bold um, bright pink Crayola crayon called Flamingo. So that was the first ever lipstick. And then MAC went on to create a line of 24 lipsticks, all inspired by different Crayola crayon shades and some pencils and some pencils and some base powders. So artists in Canada and the US start to hear more and more about MAC. Their, you know, as we would say now, their clout started to increase and they wanted to try the products. All, and including some of those artists, Miss Madonna. I'll get back to her in a second. So MAC opened its first pro store in the early 80s. With the rise of the brand, it, more, it was becoming more and more popular. They realized, hey, we need to open like a regular retail store. So they opened that up in 1985. This first retail store was located on Gay Street, and the store was situated in a part of the city that was deeply affected by the tragic AIDS epidemic. And because of um, the Frank's philosophy behind makeup, as makeup is for all, makeup is for everyone, this store became a hotspot for like club personalities and drag queens and like people alike. And that makeup for all foundation was the pretty much the foundation of MAC, that's their whole purpose, is creating makeup for everyone and for everyone. Um, MAC was pretty much what they did is they decide, they put in a lot of their campaigns people who were almost never ever featured in beauty campaigns, unconventional beauties, just regular people instead of the people we see in beauty campaigns today, okay? So they started doing that. So they've been doing the whole diversity thing since before it was cool to like marginalize people in beauty. Okay, they've been doing that for a very long time. MAC is also the first brand in cosmetic history to invest in the training and education of their um, customer service reps. So instead of like pushing sales through a traditional advertising like they, like other brands were, they relied on their actual products. They're like, the products are gonna speak for themselves. And they were giving their workers in their stores makeup artistry training. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of MAC artists. They're good. That was their whole thing. They've been doing that first. And then the MAC Pro membership program was created. It was the first ever membership program for a makeup brand in the industry. First. Are you seeing how many first I'm naming? Yeah. Uh, that's why this dis the, the like 
how Max um, social status has changed it's really affecting me because I'm just like oh that's so sad okay then in 1990 Madonna who said I'm gonna get back to she was part of she was part of the celebrities that created the big boom of MAC cosmetics basically she requested a lipstick that would last her through an entire performance so they formulated the shade Russian red for uh, Madonna's 1990 blonde ambition tour and with all these celebrity endorsements of their products the brand started to really take off the Jackson family would show up in their stores quite often you know, you know the Jackson's the Jacksons so like people were like oh my god Mac is it chief and then in 1994 Mac, Mac launched its very first Viva Glam campaign so Viva Glam it was the first campaign was modeled by RuPaul and it was um, like a burgundy red lipstick we don't care it's just the Viva Glam campaign and what they do with the Viva Glam campaign hundred percent of all the proceeds go to the Mac AIDS fund and to this date, they have raised over $400 million for the MAC AIDS Fund. Brand new beauty blender. Yes. Yes. And then in 1995, Estee Lauder purchased about half of the company. And then in 1998, Estee Lauder purchased the other half after one of the founding Franks sadly passed away. Estee Lauder, which was, it was the biggest, one of the most massive global beauty companies, helped MAC grow even further. And now there are over 1,500 locations selling the brand in over 78 countries. Wow, we love a good history lesson. Yup, yup. So um, if you didn't know a lot of that, welcome. Mac kind of did it first for most of these things. So now more history. This isn't really history. This is sort of about like um, because of Mac's ability to or caring about different people. Ugh. Mac as a whole is one of the only brands that has shown love to dark skin and beauties from like for from like I'm talking about shade range like before it was cool before it was cool they were doing it before it was you know fun to be like oh we love dark skin people yum yum so I would say I was Mac was one of the only brands up until I would say about like four years ago maybe five at this point because it's 2020 where dark skin people could find their shade in the brand without having to like dream or hope it's one of the only brands that could do that one of my first foundations that actually matched me it's not my first foundation because my first foundation was that dream mousse bullshit that was bright orange nightmare absolute nightmare so one of my first foundations that actually matched me was from mac cosmetics it was the match match master foundation i went to a whole mac store got my color situation i got my color oh my god what a trip that was in like i think ninth grade what a journey so it's one of the only foundations, one of the only companies that consistently had a shade for darker people instead of just, you know, ignoring us like the rest of y'all do. I won't get into I won't I won't, I won't, I won't get into that. Um, and yeah, the classic, your NW45. In case you didn't know, that's MAC. <laughs> that, that came from MAC. Um, I, it also led everyone and their mother to believe that they were NW45. That's a whole bunch of shenanigans. I don't know if, is anyone actually NW45? Because I have a theory that it's a, I, th I think it was a social experiment. I don't know anybody who's actually NW45. Now someone in the comments is going to be like, I am, and I'm like, good for you. But they keep, they tell everybody and their mother, you're NW45, you're NW45, you're not. Go look up your real shade, okay? Thank you. And now. So MAC is obviously doing well. I mean, they're still around, so they're obviously doing good enough. But I think everyone, once we, when people start having conversations about brands that fell off or brands that are flopping, MAC is always brought up into the conversation. And I wanted to figure out why, or like I kind of knew why, but I wanted to talk about it. So I made a video back in, it was either December or January, talking about beauty brands that are on their last legs. <laughs> And I included brands like Tarte and Benefit and like Too Faced and stuff, but I didn't include MAC. And the reason why I didn't include MAC is because I don't think they're, I don't think they're on their last legs. I think they're kind of just stuck. And you might be, what do you mean by stuck, Amanda? I pretty much just think they have not been able to develop and grow with the times of the beauty community, which you could be like, well, that's a good thing. They stay true to who they are. Or you could be like, well, that's a bad thing because they don't have as much um, social capital, beauty community capital as they should because they're MAC cosmetics. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So if you haven't thought about this in a while, you know, 2016, a big beauty community boom, like everyone, the rise of an influencer, Vine stars, where Vine was ending, so I had to move to YouTube. The amount of people on YouTube grew, and then they realized how much capital they all had, started to use it, sell people things. Like that whole thing started in 2016, the big boom of beauty and also YouTube in general, just influencers in general, the whole like career became much more visible and much more accessible to more people. And now other brands started to notice that and were like, okay, now we have to change our marketing strategy to be a little bit more influencer focused because hello, the boom of the influencer. So that's when we got discount codes, super heavy demo, um, promotion, obvious but not obvious at the time, undisclosed sponsorships, pushes from brands um, like Morphe. Um, Maybelline did it for a hot minute, Glossier with their Wouter. And then, you know, that started the rise of the sometimes good, most of the time not good and unnecessary influencer collab. So that whole thing started back in 2016. I mean, of course, these were all things before 2016, but it really took on a whole new beast with the beauty community boom of 2016. And the rise of influencer collabs happened, of course, because once you put someone up on a pedestal, which a lot of influencers are by their fans, their products will sell more because people revere influencers um y'all should stop doing that but anyway so all these brands are to take note and change their marketing strategies accordingly however mac did not mac didn't do any almost any of those things but you're probably thinking wait amanda wait back in 2015 2016 mac was doing pretty well and it was Although they hadn't changed their marketing strategy to include influencers, the whole concept of celebrity beauty brands wasn't that big yet. I did a whole video on celebrity beauty brands. Selena Gomez stands attack me for it. Get over yourself. I've been a stand for too long. You can't, you can't kick me off the internet. I've been here for too long. The idea of celebrity brands weren't as common. There weren't as many indie brands and Mac was still a huge staple in a lot of people's routine because the products are, are good. Um, the influencers were kind of doing the marketing for Mac. They kind of took on and said, because the products are good. So they started selling the products, even though Mac wasn't really, that wasn't Mac's major goal. We can just start with Miss Kylie Jenner. Um, the era of black and teal hair, Kylie Jenner, like just as she had everyone, di not everyone, white people dipping their hair in Kool-Aid, in blue Kool-Aid, in order to get their hair to look like her. Yes, I remember that. Um, that's when she started to get lip injections and everyone was like, what's on Kylie Jenner's lips? That was in like, ev that was every Teen Vogue issue talking about Kylie Jenner's lips all over Seventeen, every single website. There was at least an article a week talking about what does Kylie Jenner have on her lips. Kylie Jenner herself was selling out Max Lip Liner and Spice single-handedly people were resell because mac they had a shortage um in stores people were selling mac spice lip liners on ebay they were increasing the prices on ebay because kylie jenner was wearing it spilled again what else is new and you're probably thinking so like spice was already popular back in the 90s as a popular shade but what um Kylie Jenner did differently. I guess that made people like freak out. She modernized the color because in the 90s it was more of like the dark outline and then a pretty nude lip. What she did is she took the whole color and put that over her entire lips which was like revolutionary or something at the time that caused everyone to freak out and also it was Kylie Jenner. So products were selling out. Selling out girl. So you're probably thinking how would this contribute to them falling off? or like losing, it's basically losing beauty community clout because they're still a very alive and doing well brand. But I think that's what people mean by falling off or flopping. They mean losing beauty community clout because their bad Mac is still alive. It's just, they don't have the capital that they used to according to the beauty community. So they rode the Kylie train for as long, where's the brush? Okay, they rode the Kylie train for a pretty long time because she was selling out their stuff for a pretty long time and then she realized you know i'd make more money creating my own cosmetics company so she did and that's why she created kylie cosmetics with the lip kits and stuff and now it's the end of 2016 and 2017 and influencer collabs have started taking off even more than they did before so we have of course the the jacqueline hill palette her best cosmetics collabs violet voss had a bunch of collabs with different people that was the year like go back if you have a makeup collection 
if your palette 2017 a lot of them might be collabs just saying so all these collections were eyeshadow palettes except for champagne pop that um, highlighter because that was at the time where people were just buying palettes to just buy palettes pretty much like if you look i look back at my makeup collection yesterday a lot of my palettes are from 2017. i was just buying makeup just to buy makeup for no reason it's unnecessary it's it's unnecessary and it was crickets from mac crickets from mac with the influencer collab and it wasn't an issue it was it wasn't just like oh you haven't done a collab you're a loser no it was that and the fact that they hadn't made any sort of switch to influencer led campaigns so they finally finally did an influencer collab with with patrick star in december of 2017 that was the first um season i think they're called of patrick star's collab with mac all right so the first collection the first season of patrick star's collab with mac it had a couple of lipsticks some lip glosses the liner a uh, quad neutral eyeshadow palette and of course the classic patrick star powder so this is at the end of 2017. Modern Renaissance had just come out that past summer and it changed the game. If it had changed the game and it shifted people from the classic gold neutral brown eye to realizing, oh, we can put pink on our eyes and not look ridiculous. We can put warm tones on our eyes and not look ridiculous. That's when we started to get a lot of the looks that were like the pink, the raspberry, the maroon, the neutral with the pop. It was like that era. That's what started happening. So if you look up 2017 makeup looks, you're gonna see raspberry, pinks, purples, like modern Renaissance colors. Hello. So that Patrick Star collab, that was a stark neutral quad. It wasn't in tune with kind of what was going on. It was kind of like a day late and a dollar short. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of Dance Moms. That's why. Abby says that all the time, in case you didn't know. And then Patrick Starr kept continuing to do different seasons of his collection. He did a total of five. They were spaced about two months apart. He did a spring collection in 2018, which was pinks and purples. But do you see how that's like a day late and a dollar short? Like it had just happened the year before, and now you're doing it in March of the next year, late. They had a summer collection in June of 2018, which, and then they had a fall collection in September, and they did the final holiday collection in December of 2018. And that's when they brought back the powder. I'll put the pictures of the different collections. Sorry, I'm looking for my bronzer. Um, I'll put pictures of the different collections on the screen, and you can look at them. So the packaging is all beautiful. Like, that's something with MAC and these collections. The visuals for these collections, absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible, like, um, people need to start taking notes. However, if you look at the actual product, there was nothing, like, to go call home about. It was nothing very, like, it was like the packaging is super super cute and then you open it and it's the same bronzer that I can't use so I was like oh I would oh there wasn't really a product that people were lusting after except for that powder but that was a real limited edition product because you're not getting that powder anymore I have it it's okay it's okay um it wasn't very long lasting but the finish it does give you is absolutely beautiful but there are other powders that give you the same finish and last a long time too so i don't use that powder very often the visuals again i'm putting they should I, they might still be on the screen the visuals out of this world but when you open the actual product why it why isn't the material matching the presentation what's going on it's not it's not doing well it's not doing well the eyeshadow palettes were almost all neutral except for that spring one but the spring one was like too late uh it was like it was six months late the trend had started six months ago and they were hopping on it six months later yeah, yeah. and then since then um mac has kind of been like yeah we don't we don't need to do no influencer collabs anymore since then it's kind of been like crickets for the influencer shit so they went back to focus mac for the longest time has been doing celebrity collabs they're most of their all their viva glam lipsticks are usually with a celebrity or they just do regular celebrity collabs so they've been doing they did the Aaliyah one the selena one which just came back a couple of weeks ago or maybe it was just one week ago ariana grande had a viva glam lipstick 
Hoof, Nicki Minaj, Lord, Hello Kitty, The Simpsons, they did a Disney Villains one as well. They went back to that and I mean that first those celebrity um, collabs did well because they were new. We would never seen something like that before. We were like, oh my god, a lipstick that Ariana Grande made? Hands it over! Hands it over! And then as they kept on doing them, people were like, hmm, the collabs are their regular products just in a different packaging and marked up the price and people were like yeah no i'm not i'm not i'm not falling for it anymore and since the patrick star collab it's kind of been pretty like meh from the matt camp they've the celebrity and different collaborations they've done since then have kind of been boring they take really cute ideas and then they're just not executed and when I say not executed properly I mean the idea of what a collab is has changed since 2014 when like the, those celebrity collabs were really really big um, people don't like neutrals that much anymore they kind of gave up on them and when people start to notice as we've gotten more like the idea of an anti haul came up because of Kimberly Clark and we've gotten a lot more anti consumerism people on platforms like YouTube and on Instagram and stuff telling you, hey, you don't actually need this. Since that, people started paying more attention to the fact, hey, they're literally repackaging old products. Literally repackaging old products and selling them to you for twice as much as they're worth. And they did like, they did a new Barbie collection, petal powder, huh? Electric wonder, what? Aladdin they did with a bunch of Disney movies that made no 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 type of sense then they're releasing like 10,000 new fix plus flavors I don't I still buy the original one because I'm like I don't huh who asked that's where it comes down to and it's like these the, the potential like a Barbie collection like a new Barbie collection that could be cute that could be huge and it's not and it's not it's 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 not and if you look back at their old um their old collaborations look back at the hello kitty one the simpson one the packaging is super cute and they look at the product and it's like no ma'am boring the word i'm looking for is boring i'm sorry the word i'm look i'm looking for it is boring and if you look at these new collaborations it's not only boring it's ashy why 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 are you how are you gonna be boring and ashy that don't make no type of sense boo not an ounce of sense so what can mac do now because i don't like to talk about a problem without talking about a solution my mama taught me that so mac is currently stuck they're stuck they're releasing the same stuff with different packaging they've been doing it for a couple years now and i mean like if it ain't broke don't fix it but who's buying it sis who's buying it I don't even be seeing Matt Collection reviews on YouTube anymore because they won't do well. Because people aren't going to buy it anymore. They're stuck. So I think it's time for a nostalgia sells better than sex routine. I think it's time for that. You need to go back to what make, what made Mac famous. Let them know who had, who was one of the first to have proper shade ranges. Give us a new foundation. Tinted moisturizer. I mean, since Euphoria is on the rise or whatever, or like was, but is gonna come back in like a couple months. Give us something like that. Give us something like that. Who did lip liners best? Hello? Oh, you can't tell. Hello? Only one I will ever, ever buy in my entire life. Who have done lipstick since the dawn of time? Who's done it? Y'all. And I think you forgot. I think you forgot. I talked this on Twitter before. I would love to see a basics collection from Mac. They already did one in like 2019. They did a stripped down collection with their lipsticks. And it was cute, but it was just like lipsticks. It wasn't anything else. I would really like to see a whole entire basics collection, like with every single product. I'm not a actual in like any sort of like product development, so I don't know how any of it actually works. I'm just talking out of my butt here, okay? I would like to see lipsticks, liners, blushes, like nude blushes, bronzers, actual deep ones. And I'm seeing what my vision is. Nude packaging that matches the nude of the actual product with that, you know, like 
deep maroon lettering some brand just did that and I can't remember which one it is but that nude packaging that matches the nude of the actual product and deep maroon lettering and speaking of deep so since Mac has been there for the dark skin you know been there for us for a while it's time to steal the Ebony Queen collection idea from CoverGirl since they got rid of it for no reason. I think you, I think it's I think it's time they forfeited it. Someone else needs to steal the idea. And I think Mac, if you want, I think it'd be a great choice. It's not stealing because they got rid of it. Why? I will never understand why they got rid of the Ebony collection. I don't understand why would you get rid of the Queen collection? Why would you get rid of it? That makes no sense to me. So it's time for you guys to steal it. Steal it. Steal it. Cause. Uh, been providing for the dark girls since day one so steal it and make it your own okay and they should i think um because the queen collection has like queen latifah as the face they should have they should pick a face for this i mean you could have different faces you could have it just I, to see someone we know using it would be fantastic could be an influencer could be a celebrity pick someone um respectable though respectable in terms of like no scandals so good luck and they could come out with a new foundation new formula or honestly y'all could start repackaging and just <laughs> keep the same formula and just change the packaging out because everything is very stagnant nothing has changed from mac in the past like couple of years and i don't i don't i don't understand i don't understand what's going on i don't understand what's going on right now we're in the euphoria or soft glam time of makeup like those are the two sides of makeup right now like graphic liner is taken off beyond belief and then we see classic super soft glam and speaking of graphic liner i tweeted a while ago like i think a couple months ago about how euphoria for season two should be doing needs a campaign with beauty influencers for season two of euphoria because of the corona i don't know what's going to really go on with that but i also said euphoria should collaborate with a brand and I was thinking, I was like, what brand would do a Euphoria collab justice? I don't want to see ColourPop anywhere near it. That's basically my main thing. I don't want ColourPop anywhere near it. No hate. Um, it's just, um, but no, I don't want them anywhere near it. <laughs> I don't want to explain why. I just don't. Colors aren't deep enough for me. I want to be able to use a Euphoria collection, right? So thinking of what, what um, brand could actually do it justice. And I was like, I think MAC could i think mac has the potential to do it will they actually do it well i don't know that you'd have to wait and see but i genuinely think they would have the potential to do a euphoria collab justice okay because the thing is i know they don't want they might not want to do the whole influencer route of marketing because it's not their brand and it's never been their brand and i commend them for sticking true to like their like roots and not changing it but i'm like something has to give something has to give because when i was doing my research for this video i was on max website there is so much stuff they've released in the past like year that i have never heard of because nobody talked about it nobody knew it existed so i'm like something has to give i also want to talk about how before i said that mac was like we don't want to take on those um, marketing strategies that other brands are doing, you is using because we think that our products speak for ourselves. The issue is now. That was fine like six years ago. The issue now is the beauty community has almost done a complete 180 in terms of like what will get things to sell rather than, I don't know, focusing on the fact that your products might be good, people might like them. The beauty community and brands have taken on the idea of let's create spectacle to sell our products. Let's leak our own products let's utilize black outrage to sell everything instead of just releasing the products let's create scandal scandal strategy strategy let's collaborate with these crazy racist <laughs> influencers to create more spectacle and bring attention to our brand instead of relying on the fact the products are good so because other brands have done that and that's kind of the route the beauty community has taken it's spectacle scandal sc stunt queens that's what's going on everyone is a stunt queen that's why it's like that's not gonna work anymore mac because it's not your fault it's not your fault at all but that is the path the beauty community is now currently going down and has been for the past three years mac i know you might not want to go the full-on influencer route and i get it i get why because it can usually backfire on you 
Most of the time it can backfire on you, but something has to give. Give a little to get a little, you feel me? A li Just a little bit, because I'm like, the products are good. I use MAC blushes every, almost every single day. I used format today. Yes, the thing fell out. I don't care, it still works. I don't care, Fix Plus is a staple. Y'all know that chestnut lip liner, please, please, please. And they've always been there for the dark girls. Hello, where'd my chestnut lip liner go? If you don't own this, and then I think cork is the one if you're lighter than me. Good, it's like spice, cork, and this. Hello, hello. That kind of stuff needs to come back. Take what makes your brand great, what people are still using every single day, even though no one talks about your brand anymore, which is getting sad and it's getting on my nerves. People, people are saying your brand is flopping. And they're right. They're right. That, do we, MAC Cosmetics. Did you hear all that history I just gave? The first, the first, the first, the first. And people are saying your brand is flopping and they're right. That doesn't sit right with me. That doesn't sit right with me. They have evidence and they're correct. Something has to give. I'm sorry. I'm, I know, I know. Influence around is not for every. It's not. I wouldn't recommend it for everyone, but something's got to give. All right. And that's pretty much um, it, I think. Yeah. So that's it for MAC. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I was going to use their foundation uh, my foundations my mac foundations are currently at home they're not anyone anywhere here also don't think they would match me right now because i'm like getting lighter i don't i don't know it's because i haven't been outside that's why i didn't use but i used some mac products in today's video because everyone's like just use the products use the brand you're talking about and i'm like do you want to send me an entire full face of mac cosmetics i didn't think so so leave me the hell alone and yeah that's it so what discussion can we have in the comments today? I think you should tell me your favorite MAC product, if you use them, if you've ever tried. Oh, this is my question. What year did you get into makeup? Like around what time would you get into makeup? And what would you say um, MAC's best product is? That's a good question. Blush is my answer. Their blushes are, it's, it's, it's out of this world. Blushes are out of this world. So let me know what your answers to those questions are. And do you think MAC is flopping? My answer to that is I think, I mean, look at the evidence. The capital is not as high as it used to be. But I mean, they're always going to, if you're a dark skin person, MAC is kind of always going to be there for you because it's one of like five maybe now at this point like six or seven brands that has stuff that you can actually use. But you wouldn't know that by the collections I keep coming out with because it's all ashy. On me, it would be all ashy. So yeah, that's the end of that. So yeah, that's the end of my video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like to follow me on social media, here is my Twitter and my Instagram. Again, go have fun. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Talk to me about Mac in the comments because it's getting on my nerves. It's getting on my nerves. People are saying Mac Cosmetics is flopping and they're correct. And they're correct. Is that not infuriating to anyone else? They're correct. Something has to change. Okay, I gotta stop before I get... Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you're staying healthy and safe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.